स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया in the last lecture we defined the notion of a lift of a map g with respect to a continuous map f from y to x we discuss some of the properties of uh, such a lift we saw that if uh, we have a, a couple of curves gamma 0 and gamma 1 which are homotopic to each other and if at every stage gamma s could be lifted then the homotopic could also be lifted however at no point of time did we talk about the existence of such a lift and that is precisely what we will be doing in this particular lecture let me begin by defining a covering map which gives us a sufficient condition to talk about when a curve could be lifted let me define it for you covering map so the setup is as earlier let uh, x comma y be open subsets of c we say that uh, a continuous map we say that a continuous map f from y to x is a covering map if the following condition is satisfied the condition being that if given a point y in capital y there exists a neighborhood u of so the base space is x so it's the opposite given a point x in capital x so the image is going to be this way there is a map f from y to x given a point x here in this space capital x there exists is a neighborhood u of capital x and uh, open sets v alpha in y such that f inverse of u is the disjoint union of v alpha and the map f restricted to v alpha from v alpha to u is a homeomorphism let's spend a few minutes what this definition says to to understand what this definition says what it says is that if you have a map f from y to x and if you take some point uh, small x in the base space so many times the space x is referred to as the base space and then we have a capital y here we have this map f what the definition says is that there exists some neighborhood here which is now being shaded by red let's call it u such that if you pull back u we will be able to get hold of disjoint union of so this is going to be v1 v2 v3 and v4 it need not be finite of course but the point is to show that the restriction of the map f to v1 or the restriction of map to v2 or each of these vi's if you look at the restriction that's going to be a homeomorphism from vi to u so there are going to be sheets of open sets on top of u if you want to visualize it in some particular manner so let me go over the uh, content of the definition to pinpoint certain key aspects of such a covering map the first observation is that given any point y we have a neighborhood v alpha of that point y where f restricted to uh, the neighborhood neighborhood is going to be a homeomorphism in particular a covering map is going to be a local homeomorphism and the result that we proved in the last lecture will be applicable to such covering maps the map uh, also this open set u is called as an evenly covered neighborhood the the set u is referred to as an evenly covered neighborhood
the name is uh, motivated from the way it is covered. And uh, yeah, before we go further, let us give a few examples. The first example would be on C star, C star to C star, consider the map F from C star to C star where f of z is being given by z to the power k, where k is fixed. So, k greater than or equal to 1. Notice that uh, on C star, uh, f is, uh, uh, f does not have its derivatives vanishing at all. So, in particular by inverse function theorem, every point does have uh, a, a neighborhood where the function f is a holomorphic by holomorphism and restricted to it. So, let me just note that since f prime at z is not equal to 0 for all z in C star, we have f is a local homeomorphism. In fact, local by holomorphism, let me put it that way. A by holomorphism is just a holomorphic map with a holomorphic inverse. So, in particular, f has f is a local by holomorphism. Now, from one of the problems that we uh, proved earlier, we have given a point uh, z0 in C, there exists uh, w1 to wk in C such that the equation z to the power k is equal to z0 has exactly these solutions, uh, has wi as solutions. And let u i and v i be obtained, uh, let, let me write it this way, v i be neighborhoods of w i and uh, u i of z 0, remember that z to the power k, w i to the power k is equal to z 0. So, we have uh, v u i's are all neighborhoods of z 0 such that f restricted to v i from v i to u i is a homeomorphism. In fact, we know that it is a holomorphic map which has a holomorphic inverse. So, it is far more stronger than a homeomorphism in our case. But anyway, to establish that this is a covering map, this is enough. And what we will do is define u to be equal to the intersection of the u i's from 1 to n. The fact that there are finitely many helps us, we now have u which is a neighborhood of z0 and define, well v i prime may be as f inverse of u intersected with v i. Then uh, v i primes are all uh, disjoint, mutually disjoint and f inverse of u is going to be a disjoint union of v i prime for i equal to 1 to n and when restricted to v i prime f is going to be a homeomorphism and in particular this tells us that f is a covering map. Let us next look at another example which we are quite familiar with uh, that of the exponential map. Consider exponential map which is from C to C star where the, where the evenly covered neighborhoods are to be picked a bit carefully. We do not really have to do much effort to really pick the evenly covered neighborhood here. The only thing to note is that since the exponential uh, d by dz of e to the power z is equal to e to the power z, there exists given any point, uh, any point z0 and so given z0 in c star, let w0 in c be such that you know e to the power w0 be equal to z0. And by the inverse function theorem, we can get hold of uh, u and v, u be uh, neighborhood of w0 and uh, maybe not, maybe v uh, the neighborhood of w0 and u of z0 such that when restricted, e restricted to the x restricted to 
V, it's going to be a local biholomer. It's going to be a biholomorphism. It's going to be a holomorphic map with a holomorphic inverse. Now the key observation here would be to show that this is an exercise which I'll leave it to you. The exercise is to show that if you look at V plus 2 pi i n, so let's define V n to be equal to this particular uh, open set. What is this? This is just the set of all z plus 2 pi i n where n is varying over integers. And if you look at v n, then v n this collection is disjoint, mutually disjoint. And uh, another observation would be that f restricted to v n from v n to u is a homeomorphism. And another observation would be oh, what is f here? Exp f is the exponential map here and therefore if you look at the exponential inverse of u that's just going to be equal to the disjoint union of vn where n varies over integers and that's precisely uh, what we were trying to prove so this is the this is the only observation that is to be made which uh, requires some amount of effort but i would urge you to sit and uh, really do solve this and with that we will be establishing that the exponential is a covering map from C to C star. So why consider covering maps? Covering maps are special in the sense that given a curve on the base space x, given a curve gamma and uh, given a point y0 tilde in the pullback of the starting point x0 of uh, the curve gamma, then we can get a unique lift of the curve gamma which starts at y0 tilde. Let me write that down. This is what is called as the curve lifting property. Let me write it down in the form of a theorem for you. We have a covering map. Let f from y to x be a covering map. Now, if you consider a curve gamma and let gamma from a b to x be a curve from x0 to x1 in capital X. Suppose y0 is a point which is in the pre image of uh, x0 under f. Suppose y0 belongs to f inverse of x0. That means f of y0 is equal to x0. Then there exists a unique lift gamma tilde from a b to y of gamma with respect to f such that gamma tilde of a is equal to y0. That means that we can uh, start, we can get hold of a lift, a curve in y in, uh, in capital Y which starts, which has the initial point exactly at y. If, to, if it is to be captured in images, suppose you have a, a curve here, say this is from x0 to x1 and suppose this is the cover, oh yeah, I didn't say what, what is meant by a cover. We defined what is meant by a covering map. Uh, it's conventional to say that y is a cover of x then y is called a cover of capital X. If that X is a covering map from y to X, then we say that y is a cover of X. So suppose we have a cover here, say this is y, this is X and suppose we have a map f here and suppose X0 has pullbacks at y0 tilde, say y1 tilde, y2 tilde and so on. There might be more, I am just focusing on 3. What the theorem tells us is that suppose we fix one of the pullbacks, say y1 tilde which is mapping to x0, then there exists a curve gamma tilde starting here, this is going to be gamma tilde such that it is a lift of uh, gamma with respect to f. 
that means that f composed with gamma tilde will be equal to gamma. Now, if we had changed the starting point to y0 tilde, the curve would have been different. It would have started with y0, but nevertheless, we still have a lift starting at y0. So, for every such point in the pre image, we have a curve starting at the pre image. Okay, let us give a proof of this statement. So, notice that given uh, a point x on gamma of AB. So, if you take some point x in the image of uh, the curve, we have an evenly covered neighborhood ux. We have a neighborhood u subscript x evenly covered uh, for the covering map capital F. What does this mean? This means that if you look at f from ux to, uh, if you look at f inverse of ux, that is going to be a disjoint union of open sets v alpha and such that if f restricted to v alpha is considered, that is going to be a homeomorphism. That is precisely what it means for uh, each of these to be evenly covered. Now, if you take the Lebesgue number corresponding to this cover, notice that uh, gamma of AB is compact because it is the image of uh, a compact set under a closed set gamma, a closed function gamma and therefore, let delta maybe be the Lebesgue number of the collection of ux, where x is ranging over all points on the image of gamma. So, let me not, not write that down, we will just make the notation more complicated. The x's are ranging over every point on the image of gamma and because of compactness we have a delta. So, what we will do is we will partition our a b uh, such that the partition size is less than delta by 2. So, let a equal to t 0 less than t 1 less than t n equal to b be a partition of a b with partition size less than delta by 2. So, in particular if you pick gamma of t i which is let us call it x i or something and gamma of t i plus 1, they are going to be in one of the u axis and therefore, it will be in one of the evenly covered neighborhood. So, consecutive points on the uh, image are going to lie on evenly covered neighborhoods. That is the, that is the goal of picking one such partition. Now, once we have such a partition, we will construct our, uh, our lift by the process of induction. So, we will, we will construct a lift by induction, induction on, on, on the indices t1, t2, t0, t1, t2 up to tn on the in index ti, right. So, when i is equal to 0, there is nothing to prove. In fact, for uh, t equal to, for t 0 and t 1, for i is equal to 0 and 1, let us consider what happens. There exists some u, an evenly covered neighborhood, there exists an evenly covered neighborhood such that gamma of t 0 and gamma of t 1 belongs to u and let us pick a v, let v uh, be contained in f inverse of, so let, let f inverse of u be some disjoint union of v alpha and pick alpha such that what is the starting point that we are desiring? We want some y0, right? So, let v alpha be the particular the particular uh, index where our point y0 is going to lie. 
So let alpha not be such that y not belongs to v alpha not, and phi from u to v alpha not be the inverse. Remember that f restricted to v alpha not from v alpha not to u is a homeomorphism. And therefore, if you consider the inverse, that's also going to be a homeomorphism. This is a homeomorphism of f restricted to v alpha not. This is an inverse of f restricted to v alpha not. Now, if we define sigma uh, or maybe not gamma tilde uh, of t to be equal to phi composed with gamma of t for t in t0 comma t1 then gamma tilde is a lift of gamma restricted to t0 comma t1. So, the induction process has been kick started for, for t0 singleton there is nothing to prove because the lift is now going to be just uh, y naught. Here uh, we do have the curve gamma tilde starting from y naught by the very choice of phi. Now, suppose we have constructed our curve gamma tilde up till stage k. Suppose by induction, oh, induction is not, uh, we are trying to use induction. Suppose gamma tilde has been constructed up to gamma of tk. Suppose this has already tk minus 1, we will try to do it for tk. Let us try to do it for tk. Uh, an image will help here. So, this is our x and we have the curve gamma from x0 to say x1. This is basically x, we should not use x1 here. Okay, I will use some other indices z1, z2, zk minus 1, zk and so on. And we know that each of this is sitting in some evenly covered neighborhood and so on. What can be done is let u be an evenly covered neighborhood containing gamma of t k minus 1 and gamma of t k. This is possible because the distance of gamma of t k minus 1 and gamma of t k is less than delta by 2 and being the delta being the Lebesgue number, we will be able to find one such evenly covered neighborhood. One element in fact from the open cover that we had considered and our open cover that we had considered were, were all evenly covered neighborhoods. Let us see where it was done was done somewhere here. Yes, so we had considered those neighborhoods which were evenly covered and because our Lebesgue number is delta and the distance of these two is going to be less than delta by 2, this is certainly possible. So, we do have an evenly covered neighborhood u and we just imitate what we just did. Define gamma tilde of t k minus 1 to be equal to z k minus 1 tilde and uh, pick pick uh, v suppose f inverse of u is just the disjoint union of v alpha and alpha v such that may be alpha not. So, the u's and v alphas have now changed, they are not the same as the u's and v alphas earlier, nor is the alpha not. But for the sake of keeping consistency with the notions, let me just stick to it. So, alpha not be such that f in uh, v z k minus 1 tilde belongs to v alpha not. And now, we fix this v alpha not and let phi from v alpha not to u be the inverse of f restricted to v alpha naught. Now, 
let us imitate what we did earlier and define gamma tilde of t to be equal to p composed with gamma of t for t in t k minus 1 to t k. Notice that by very definition this map gamma tilde is going to be a lift and moreover not just uh, uh, a lift it will also start from z k minus 1 tilde and therefore it is going to be a continuous map by the gluing lemma. Also f or rather gamma tilde now defined from uh, a to t k into capital Y is a lift. When I say lift the continuity is already captured is a lift of gamma restricted to a t k and by the induction argument we just we have just completed the induction argument and hence we have gamma tilde from a b to y is a lift. So, we, we have been able to compute the lift of gamma. Now, the key thing to observe is that this lift that we have uh, constructed is unique. Why is it unique? The uniqueness follows directly from the fact that at uh, uh, a point gamma tilde of of uh, a we are prescribing it to take the value y0 tilde and the moment we know one value we know that it is going to be unique by the uniqueness of the lift. And therefore, we do have a lift of uh, a curve gamma on to the cover. The theorem only gives us a guarantee of a lift it does not tell us much about the uh, about the property of the lift for example. For example, consider the following scenario. You look at the map instead of looking at c star let me look at d minus 0 to d minus 0 maybe c star to c star look at the map f from c star to c star given by f of z is equal to z square. We checked some time back that this is indeed a covering map and uh, let us consider the unit circle the curve gamma of t be equal to e to the power i t where t is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, if you demand that this be lifted to a curve which starts at 1, remember that 1 is being mapped to 1 by f and therefore, if we demand that a curve a lift be constructed starting at 1, we do have a lift and that is going to be a unique lift. We in fact know what is going to be the map as well. So, define gamma tilde of t to be equal to e to the power i t by 2 for t belonging to 0 to 2 pi. Then notice that f of gamma tilde of t this is equal to f of z is z square and therefore this is just going to be equal to e to the power i t which is equal to gamma of t. So, this is clearly a lift of gamma and also notice that at t is equal to 0 gamma tilde of 0 is 1. So, this is a this is a lift which has the initial point as 1 and gamma tilde is a lift with initial point lift of what lift of gamma with respect to f with initial point 1. But notice that gamma is the unit circle it is a simple closed curve however gamma tilde is a curve which starts at 1 and ends at minus 1. So, this is not a closed curve. So, a, a closed curve need not be lifted to a closed curve that is the first thing that we can note. Of course, if you are lifting a null homotopic curve uh, then the story is different because now the entire homotopy can be lifted and therefore the uh, homotopy will lift to a null homotopy in y as well and therefore the curve will continue to be a closed curve but not in such curves where it is not null homotopic. As an application of uh, what we have just done let me just prove a proposition for you. The proposition basically says that if you look at the the uh, pullback of a 
a particular point of x and look at its cardinality that's going to be the same as the pullback of the cardinality of the pullback of any other point that's a corollary to what we just did let f from y to x be a covering map So let, uh, let's consider a covering map like this and uh, suppose x0 and x1 are points in capital X, then the cardinality of f inverse of x0 is the same as the cardinality of f inverse of y0. Uh, of, of f inverse of x1. Of course, we need to put in a few more conditions. Uh, f be a map from y to x where x is path connected. Be a covering map. The path connectedness assumption will we'll see why this has been imposed. The moment we are given such points x0 and x1, path connectedness ensures that uh, we have a path. In fact, this is all in C, so connectedness was enough. We did not have to impose this extra condition of path, we just need x to be connected because it is an open connected subset. So, y and x are open connected subsets of C and therefore, this is going to be path connected as well. Now, the point is that uh, since x is connected, there exists a path gamma from x0 to x1. Now, let y be a point in p inverse of x0. You pick some point in the pullback of x0. Then there exists a unique path by the previous theorem, by the previous theorem, there exists a path there x is a lift gamma tilde of gamma with, with initial point starting point y naught or rather y here. Now, let us define uh, a map phi from f inverse of x naught to f inverse of x 1 given by P of y to be equal to gamma tilde of b. Remember that gamma is a path from uh, x0 to x1 and therefore, gamma tilde is going to be a path from uh, y to some point in the pre image of x. So, this is going to certainly make sense and the uniqueness tells us that this map phi is well defined. By uniqueness, this map is injective in fact. By considering the, uh, so it is an exercise for you to sit down and complete. It is a simple exercise actually which will help you think about why uh, we are considering such a map and how, how the covering space theory is coming into the picture to conclude that phi is a bijection. And therefore, we have a bijective map from the pullback of x0 to the pullback of uh, x1, which hence establishes that this is going to be of the same cardinality. Now that we have seen that curves can be lifted with respect to covering maps, let us ask the more general question of whether we can lift arbitrary continuous maps with respect to covering maps. That will be the goal of the next theorem. Let, let me write down the theorem and then uh, we will prove it. So, the theorem states the following. So, let f be a map from y to x be a covering map. The covering map is bit, uh, from an open subset of C to another open subset of C. Covering map from y to x, open subsets of C. I should probably stop writing this. And uh, let us take some open subset z. Let z be an open connected, open connected subset of C. 
and as usual we will put more conditions on z namely that of simply connected uh, which is both simply connected and locally connected locally connected basically tells us that given any point in the space and any neighborhood of it we will be able to get hold of a smaller neighborhood of the point contained in the open set which is connected simply connected and locally connected suppose g is a map from z into x be a continuous map under the hypothesis that we have imposed on z we can conclude that there exists a unique lift g tilde from z to y of g with respect to f let me just draw the picture so that the things aha uh, further uniqueness maybe i should correct this a bit then given two points given uh, z0 in capital z and y0 in capital y such that uh, g of z0 is the same as f of y0 then there exists unless we mention one point where it can be sent to it's not going to be unique but the moment it is uh, prescribed where a particular point goes the lift is unique that's something which we have already seen hence now there exists a unique lift g tilde from z to y of g with respect to f let's draw pictures so that the the situation is clarified there is our x here and we have y here there is the covering map f from y to x we also have a map g from a simply connected locally connected open subset of c which is being called as z and suppose we start off with some point here let's say z0 and say y0 are a couple of points which both are getting mapped to the same point let's call it x0 suppose g of z0 is the same as uh, f of y0 then the theorem says that there exists a unique lift g tilde which sends z0 to y0 and which lifts g it's in some sense similar to what we did while we did uh, curve lifting we prescribed a point at which the curve begins and then we have a unique lift it's something similar to that okay so let's give a proof of this theorem the proof is going to use the machinery we have developed till now to talk about uh, g tilde to even define d g tilde let's pick some arbitrary point let z be a point in capital z and let's pick a curve remember that it's a connected space and in particular it's going to be a path connected space so let uh, gamma be a curve from z0 to z so if i to draw the picture say this is the point this is the point z0 and if this is the point say z then you pick a curve gamma which connects z uh, z not to z maybe so maybe i should uh, draw it in this direction and if we have the point x not here and if we pick the point the image of z let's call it y we are going to get a curve from x not to uh, y by sorry y y should be called x it's in capital x after all then we have a curve from x not to x which is obtained by composing with g let me just write that down let uh, let's call it something sigma b the curve uh, g composed with gamma from x0 to x where x x is equal to g of z suppose we get hold of a curve like this sigma now by using the unique lifting property of curves given a uh, initial point by a previous theorem that we have proved we can lift our sigma by a previous theorem 
there exists a unique lift sigma tilde there exists a unique uh, curve sigma tilde in capital y with initial point we can prescribe the initial point right the initial point let's demand that it starts at y0 and lifting sigma with respect to f so let me just draw that now we have our y0 somewhere here and let's get hold of this is our sigma tilde so remember that this is sigma this is gamma f composed with sigma tilde is sigma because it's a lift and it's starting at y0 and if we now look at uh, what the end point of this sigma tilde is define the end point to be g tilde of z end point which is the or the terminal point which was the standard notation that was used terminal point of sigma tilde but then yes there are many questions that immediately come up the first question is why would uh, such a function g be well defined at all it very much depends on the curve gamma we picked there was nothing special about the curve gamma that we picked here right the gamma was some arbitrary curve from z0 to z1 if we had picked some other let's call this uh, gamma 0 just for the sake of uh, sigma zeros and gamma zeros so this is the first curve as is to be expected we are going to now take one more curve <coughs> gamma 1 from z naught to z and uh, we will show that it does not really matter it does not depend on which curve we pick so the question of well definedness let us address that let gamma 1 be another curve let gamma 1 be another curve in capital Z from Z0 to Z1. The thing to keep in mind is that our Z is simply connected. Since Z is simply connected, any two curves between two fixed points are going to be homotopic with fixed endpoints. That is something which we have already seen. Gamma 0 is homotopic to gamma 1 with fixed endpoints. Uh, Let us give the homotopy some name through the homotopy H. Through the homotopy H. H remember is going to be from 0, 1 cross AB into uh, this case it is going to be omega. So, this is the homotopy where H 0 comma T is going to be gamma 0 of T, H 1 of T is going to be equal to gamma 1 of T h of s comma a is z0 h of s comma b is equal to z1 this is precisely what the properties of h are going to be and of course h is continuous and if you consider so let me just give you an exercise here to observe that g composed with h is a homotopy with fixed endpoints with fixed endpoints from sigma 0 tilde to sigma 1 tilde. Remember that sigma 0 tilde, I am sorry, sigma 0 to sigma 1. We still have not got, we are going to do it later. By lifting it, we will be getting hold of a homotopy from sigma 0 tilde to sigma 1 tilde, but we are not there yet. G composed with S by you know, simple verification, one can see that it is of course a continuous map and the other properties of a homotopy with fixed endpoints are satisfied. And therefore, it is certainly going to be a homotopy from sigma 0 to sigma 1. Also notice if sigma s is defined to be what is it g composed with h of s comma t. So, this is sigma s of t. This is a curve from is a curve from sigma from z0 sorry now it is in x right. So, this is going to be from x0 to small x and uh, by the curve lifting that uh, we have done curve lift, 
curve, curve lifting theorem by a previous theorem, let me put it that way. Each of these sigma s can be lifted. There exists a lift, in fact a unique lift, sigma s tilde uh, in capital Y of sigma s with initial point y0. This is something which we can ensure by the previous theorem. Let me now go back a few uh, theorems and show you that this entire homotopy can be now lifted. There was a theorem which we proved earlier wherein uh, for any local homeomorphism, we can lift the entire homotopy if each gamma s, yes, this is precisely the theorem. For every s, if uh, gamma s can be lifted to a path gamma s tilde, then what we will be able to establish is that the entire homotopy can be lifted to a homotopy uh, with fixed endpoints in capital Y. So, always remember that a covering map is in particular a local homeomorphism as well. So, again now by a previous theorem, which I just showed, by a previous theorem, G composed with H can be lifted to a homotopy with fixed endpoints. With fixed endpoints in capital Y. In particular, the terminal point of sigma 1 tilde, ah, so let me from sigma 0 tilde to sigma 1 tilde, where sigma 1 tilde is the lift of uh, sigma 1 which starts at uh, y0. So, so, in particular, the terminal point of sigma 1 tilde is the same is equal to g tilde of z which is the terminal point of sigma 0 tilde. Hence, g tilde is well defined. So, we now have a map uh, which does satisfy the condition. So, check, check that g tilde of uh, z, if you compose it with f, this is going to be equal to g of z. That is quite straightforward because this is a lift and it certainly satisfies this condition. We certainly have now a potential candidate which could be a lift. Now, this candidate does work, but we still have to check for something. We have to show that this g tilde that we just defined, that is in particular a continuous map as well. So, that is the next claim that will be proven g tilde is continuous. Now, remember that uh, we have not used the fact that z is locally connected and that is what this is precisely where we will be going, we will be using that. To show that g tilde is continuous, we will prove the following. Enough to show, let me just write it as E T S. enough to show that given a point say z in, in, in w, uh, let V be a neighborhood of f of z. Then uh, z is an interior point, interior point of f inverse, not f, g tilde inverse of V. If we show this, we would have established that our map g tilde is a continuous map. So, you, can, you should sit down and think about it. This is precisely what is needed to be shown. And let us give a proof of uh, this particular claim. The claim is uh, going to use the fact that z is a locally connected space. We will come to that. But before that, v being unable, let us call this point something. Let us call this point y, f of z neighborhood of f of z does not make sense, g, of, g tilde of z. Yes, so g tilde of z, I should also be a little careful, g tilde is the map from y, sorry, from z to y, which is the potential candidate of a lift. So, if you look at g tilde of y, g tilde of z, which is y, we have a neighborhood v, given a neighborhood v, uh, the first observation is that we can shrink this neighborhood if needed uh, and uh, Restricted to a open set where our map f is a local homeomorphism. Uh, by shrinking v, if needed, if needed, assume that 
f restricted to v from v to u is a local homeomorphism. Remember that uh, is a homeomorphism. This is possible because f is a covering map, in particular it is a local homeomorphism and because it is a local homeomorphism, we can restrict to a neighborhood where it is indeed a homeomorphism. Now, the shrinking does not make any difference to what we, we are intending to prove because if we can get hold of a neighborhood of z in f inverse of some smaller set than v, then it is in particular contained in f inverse of v as well and therefore, we will be good. Uh, with respect to proving the theorem. So, we will work with V which is now uh, a neighborhood of Y where our F is going to be a homeomorphism. Let us call the inverse with inverse something, let us call it something with inverse phi from U to V, this is precisely the inverse. Now, let us consider G inverse of U, remember that G is a continuous map to begin with, right? Since G is continuous, consider G inverse of U which is an open set, which is in fact a neighborhood, which is a neighborhood of uh, Z. Why is that the case? Because, because of the simple reason that uh, uh, G inverse of u is an open set and in particular it contains z. This is the exact reason why it is a neighborhood and now by using the local connectedness by local connectedness of of capital Z, we can get hold of a neighborhood of small z there exists a neighborhood let us call it something w of small z such that w is contained in g inverse of u and w is connect path connected w is connected that's enough locally connected means it's connected and in particular connectedness and path connectedness are the same for open sets here in the complex plane and therefore we have w is path connected as well now my claim is that w is contained in g tilde inverse of v if you are proving this we have essentially proved that uh, g tilde is a continuous map. So, this claim is the final uh, piece to establish our result. Okay, so, let us pick some arbitrary point in W, we will show that uh, it is contained in g tilde inverse of V. So, let z prime be some point in W and the first thing is that because W is path connected, uh, we have a path, there exists a path the path is from say path let us call it something delta from z to z prime in capital W. So, this path connectedness of W is being used very crucially and if you look at G composed with delta, G composed with delta is then so let me draw a picture so that the situation is clear. The z is here, the x is here and the y is here, we have a map here f, we have a map here g and uh, we have w something of this sort, z0 will be some point somewhere, we have picked a point z here and z prime b some other point here and we have connected it with some delta and again there will be x0 here, there will be an x somewhere here which will have u as a neighborhood and within u g composed with delta is going to be a path from is a curve from x to uh, x prime. So, g composed with delta is a curve in u because g inverse of u contains w g composed with delta is a curve in u from x to x prime. Now, we will lift this g composed with delta to a path in capital V. Okay, define uh, g composed with delta tilde to be equal to phi composed with g composed with delta. Notice that this is going to be now a path starting at y because 
p of x is equal to y and this is going to give you some path from say y to y prime and this is just p composed with g composed with delta. Now let us see, now if you consider the uh, path that we started off with, suppose this is our gamma 0, we will have gamma 0 tilde, sorry, gamma sigma 0 here and then sigma 0 tilde above and we have a sigma 0 tilde here and a few simple checks will tell us that the concatenation of gamma 0 plus uh, delta, if you look at the image of this, g of this, this is going to be equal to sigma 0 plus g composed with delta and further we have sigma 0 tilde plus phi composed with g composed with delta is a lift of sigma 0 concatenated with g composed with delta and notice that sigma 0 tilde plus phi composed with g composed with delta is now a path from uh, y0 from the point y0 to the point y prime. So, in particular g tilde of then by definition of g tilde, g tilde of uh, what was the point here z prime that is going to be equal to the terminal point of terminal point of sigma 0 tilde plus phi composed with g composed with delta the concatenation. So, in particular that is going to be the terminal point of phi composed with g composed with delta which belongs to capital V and that is precisely what we were trying to show isn't it? phi composed with g composed with delta is phi is after all a map from u to v and therefore this is going to be in capital V. In particular z prime belongs to g inverse of g tilde inverse of v and that is precisely what we were trying to prove. W which tells us we took an arbitrary point and hence W is contained in g tilde inverse of v. And with this we also established the fact that our map g tilde is a continuous map. So, we have just proved that our lift is continuous and therefore, uh, given any such map g, we will be able to talk about uniqueness has already been proved, we will be able to talk about a unique lift. Let me conclude this lecture by observing that uh, this gives us a very, very simple way of lifting our uh, uh, lifting non-zero holomorphic maps on simply connected domains in the complex plane. So, let omega, now let me just add the extra condition of local connectedness, omega be uh, simply connected, locally connected, locally connected open subset of, open connected subset of, of C and uh, g from omega to c star b the uh, uh, holomorphic map we also have that x then x we know that x is a covering map from c to c star the conclusion is that then there x is uh, left g tilde from omega to c such that x of g tilde is equal to g and if we prescribe the pullback or the lift at one point g tilde is uniquely uh, determined and that is precisely what we had done while we discussed the branch of the logarithm. Let me stop.